Hello, hi, assalamualaikum and very good morning to all my lovely girls. Alright, I hope you all in a good condition today. Alright, so for today, we are going to continue our discussion on the 13.2 urinary system. Right, so in my previous video, we already discussed about the uh, formation of the urine. So in this video, I uh, will do a short revision yeah, about the uh, explaining the formation of the urine. Okay, that is referred to the first learning standard. Describe the formation of urine that involves three processes. Okay, what are they? Ultrafiltration, reabsorption, and secretion. And the second learning standards for today synthesize the concept of homeostasis by using negative feedback mechanism in osmoregulation. Alright, so these are referred to the two learning standards for today. Alright, so now let's take a look on the formation of the urine. Alright, okay, so the formation of urine will involve the structure called nephron. Yeah, so this is referred to the structure of the nephron. Okay, so nephron refer to the basic unit of the kidney. Yeah, in one kidney, there is a million of the nephron yeah, in the one kidney. So in our both kidney, there are about two millions of a nephron yeah, in the kidney. Okay, so the formation of urine occur in the nephron. Yeah, occur in the nephron of the kidney. Alright, so when you are going to explain about the formation of the urine, so you have to explain about the three processes that occur here. Yeah, okay, three processes that occur and lastly it will uh, form as a urine. Alright, so what are the uh, what are the processes occur here? The first one is referred to the ultrafiltration. Yeah, ultrafiltration and the second process occur refer to the reabsorption yeah, reabsorption that occur along the renal tubules yeah. so renal tubules consist of proximal convoluted tubule loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule so in this tubule yeah, reabsorption occur all right, and the last one is the third process that occur is secretion. All right, so the secretion occur in only in the distal convoluted tubule. All right, so these three process occur. Yeah, the three process there. These three process occur in the formation of the urine. Okay, I repeat. The first one is referred to the ultrafiltration. So what is the ultrafiltration? It is referred to the uh, refer or occur when the high hydrostatic pressure, the yeah, high hydrostatic pressure yeah, that uh, produce here, yeah, that produce that force the fluid, yeah, that force the fluid inside the glomerulus enter or seep out or diffuse out, yeah, uh, from the glomerulus to the Bowman's capsule. Yeah, all right. Okay, I repeat. So, what is the ultrafiltration? It is a process. Yeah, uh, when yeah, when the high hydrostatic pressure yeah force the fluid inside the glomerulus okay diffuse out yeah diffuse out from the glomerulus wall to the Bowman capsule. Right, so that is referred to the ultrafiltration. So once the, the fluid enter into the Bowman capsule, uh, it is called as glomerular filtrate. Yeah, glomerular filtrate. So the content of the glomerular uh, filtrates are uh, same with the blood plasma, except okay, except red blood cell, platelet, and also plasma protein. Okay, so why the red blood cell cannot diffuse out? Because uh, they have a larger or bigger size, right? Okay, so uh, once the uh, the glomerular filtrate, okay, so inside the Bowman capsule, the fluid we call as glomerular 
filtrate. So the glomerular filtrate will flow into the uh, into the renal tubule, which is referred to the first renal tubule is uh, proximal convoluted tubule. Alright, so and then it will continue with the second process occur here. Okay, what is the second process occur here? Uh, it is referred to the reabsorption. Yeah, referred to the reabsorption. So what happened here? Yeah, what happened? Uh, the content that re the substance inside the glomerular filtrate and uh, that involve the sodium ion, yeah, chloride ion, glucose, amino acid, right, and also water are uh, reabsorbed. They yeah, reabsorb yeah, from the from the uh, proximal convoluted tubule to the blood capillary here. Right, so means this substance will enter back into the blood, yeah, enter uh, back into the blood, yeah, okay, through blood capillary. All right, so that is referred to the reabsorption. Yeah, reabsorption refer to the movement of the substance from the renal tubule here, from the proximal convoluted tubule here to the blood capillary. All right, okay, and then. Uh, so you have to know that how does the sodium ion are uh, transported yeah, to the blood capillary? Okay, by how? By active transport. If a uh, chloride ion by passive transport. Yeah. Okay, so if glucose amino acid, okay, hundred percent of the glucose amino acid are reabsorbed. Yeah, reabsorbed into the blood capillary by active transport. Alright, so you have to know uh, what are the process involved that transport the substance back into the blood capillary. Alright, okay, and then the same process occur in the loop of Henley. Alright, so uh, please do not forget that osmosis occur here. Yeah, okay, whereby the water move, yeah, the water in the renal tubule here. In the loop of Henley, in the proximal convoluted tubule, will move, yeah, will move or will diffuse into the blood capillary. Okay, we diffuse into the blood capillary by osmosis. All right. Okay, and then the say the same process occur here. All right. So this is referred to the loop of Henley, and uh, this is referred to the uh, distal convoluted tubule. All right. So, uh, what are the process occur in the renal tubule? Uh, the process occur is reabsorption. Yeah, reabsorption. The movement of the substance yeah, from the renal tubule here to the blood capillary. Okay, by what process? By different process yeah, based on the substance, right? Okay, next we go to the distal convoluted tubule here. Yeah, in the distal convoluted tubule, what is the process occur here? Yeah, the process occur here refer to the secretion. Yeah, secretion. Okay, as you look at the arrow here, yeah, the arrow here refer to the so this is refer to the potassium ion, yeah, hydrogen ion. This is urea, right? Okay, urea. So this uh, refer to the secretion process. Yes, secretion process involves the movement of this substance yeah, from the blood capillary into the distal convoluted tubule. Alright, so all of these are toxic waste. Yeah, potassium ion, hydrogen ion, yeah, urea, creatinine, yeah, ammonium, all of these are toxic waste. So all these toxic waste are secreted from the blood capillary into the distal convoluted tubule to be excreted. Right? To be excreted. Okay, so that is referred to the secretion. Yeah, secretion. And then, alright, so uh, please do not forget, so here also occur reabsorption at the same time. Alright, and then what happened to the uh, renal fluid? It will enter into the collecting duct and it will, uh, it will, uh, urine is formed here. Yeah, it will cause the formation of the urine here. Alright, so, uh, so at the end of the nephron, 
it will uh, will will cause the formation of the urine yeah, in the collecting dog and the urine will enter into the u ureter yeah from the ureter it will enter into the gallbladder and that will be excreted out yeah get through urethra all right okay so that is referred to the formation of the urine yeah formation of the urine that occur in the nephron of the kidney okay so what you have to know the three processes that occur yeah, what are they ultrafiltration and then a second one is reabsorption that occur in the proximal convoluted tubule loop of Henle and also the distal convoluted tubule and the third process occur is the secretion yeah see Creation. Okay, please read more and more until you do understand yeah, the concept of the formation of the urine. Okay, next we go to the mechanism of homeostasis and osmoregulation. Alright, okay, do you still remember what is a homeostasis? Homeostasis refers to the regulation of the physical and chemical factors yeah, of the internal air internal environment yeah, at the or uh, at the normal range yeah, or within the normal range yeah, to make sure the cell can function in optimum condition right so we are going to discuss about the mechanism of homeostasis and relate with the osmoregulation yeah, related with the osmoregulation okay so osmoregulation uh, is related to the kidney, uh, relate to the kidney, very close, uh, close related to the kidney because, yeah, uh, because the kidney will control the volume of water inside our body. Okay, so what is the osmoregulation? Yeah, osmoregulation is the process of regulating water and salts yeah, in the body. Yeah, process of regulating. Okay, regulating what? Water and salt. Okay, osmo refer to the os, osmotic pressure. Yeah, refer to the osmotic pressure or relate to the osmosis. Yeah, osmosis relate to the water. Alright, so what is the osmoregulation? The process of regulating water and salt in the body. So the blood osmotic pressure can be maintained at a normal range. Alright, so that is referred to the osmoregulation, the process of regulating water and salt in the body. Alright, so now let's discuss yeah, what happens when we drink too much of water. When we drink too much of water. Yeah? So this is referred to the mechanism of the homeostasis yeah, that involves the osmo regulation yeah okay when we drink too much of water for example we drink three cups of the water yeah? three glass of the water okay what happened so it will cause our blood osmotic pressure drops here yeah? our blood osmotic pressure drops okay you have to remember that blood osmotic pressure is depend on the content of the uh, water yeah in our Body, yeah okay so the blood osmotic pressure depend on the water content inside our blood yeah inside our blood so when we drink too much of water it will cause our blood osmotic pressure drops or decrease yeah decrease to below normal range all right and then what happened the osmoreceptor in a high in the hypothalamus yeah osmoreceptor refer to the receptor that detect the change in the osmotic pressure right so the osmoreceptor in the hypothalamus are less stimulated okay less stimulated and then what happened? The pituitary gland, yeah, pituitary gland is less stimulated, right? The pituitary gland refers to the master of gland, yeah, uh, that secrete the ADH, right? So when the pituitary gland is less stimulated, so less ADH is secreted from the pituitary gland, yeah, less ADH is secreted from the pituitary gland so do you remember what is the function of the adh 
Yeah, the full name of the ADH is antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone. Okay, so what is the function of the ADH? Yeah, ADH is important yeah, uh, to, uh, to stimulate the reabsorption of water. Uh, the re uh, reabsorption of the water in the kidney. Alright, so when there is a less ADH secreted, okay, what happens next? Low ADH concentration cause the wall of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct to become less permeable to water. Okay, so when there is a less ADH, it will cause uh, our distal convoluted tubule yeah, and also collecting duct uh, become less permeable to water. Alright, so the renal tubule or the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct become less permeable to water. And then what happened? Less water is reabsorbed from the renal fluid into the blood capillary. So less water is reabsorbed from where? From the renal fluid or renal tubules yeah, into the blood capillary. And then, okay, because of less water reabsorbed, what happened to the urine produced? The, uh, the dilute urine is generated. Yeah, the dilute urine is formed. Yeah, uh, dilute uh, mean less concentrated urine. Okay, in high volume. Yeah, in high volume. And the color of the urine also in light color. Yeah, light color. Alright, and then uh, what happened? This urine will be excreted up. And lastly, it will uh, cause the blood osmotic pressure increase and back to the normal range. Yeah, back to the normal blood osmotic pressure okay so this is refer to the homeostasis yeah, that involve the osmo regulation yeah, involve the osmo regulation when we drink too much of water all right okay so next we go to the okay we go to the second situation yeah uh, uh, for example when we do a vigorous activity or when we drink too little of water or uh, when we drink too little of water or we lost a lot of water during vigorous activity okay what happened so when uh, we drink too little of water it will work it will cause our water content in the blood become lower Alright, so when the water blood content in the blood lower, it will cause our blood osmotic pressure increase. Yeah, okay. So the blood osmotic pressure increase because our uh, blood water content is low. Alright, so it will cause the blood osmotic pressure increase to the uh, be a uh, increase above the normal range not below here right okay above normal range okay the blood osmotic pressure increase above normal range okay and then what happened osmoreceptor okay osmoreceptor in the hypothalamus are stimulated yeah osmoreceptor are stimulated here okay stimulated because uh, high blood osmotic pressure and then what happened the pituitary gland is stimulated so more adh is secreted okay when more adh is secreted it will cause yeah, it will cause uh, the wall of the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct to become more permeable to water yeah it will cause the renal tubule or the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct to become perme uh, more permeable to water. And then what happened? More water is reabsorbed from the renal fluid into the blood capillary. Okay, and then when there is more water is reabsorbed, yeah, what happened to the urine uh, form? Yeah, they, it will form a concentrated urine. 
yeah, concentrated urine in low volumes, yeah, in low volumes, yeah, in low amount, yeah, and also the color of the urine is uh, darker in color, yeah, darker in color, and then so uh, what happened after that? It will slowly uh, decrease, yeah, decrease the blood osmotic pressure and back to the normal range yeah back to the normal range okay so this refer to the homeostasis yeah homeostasis that involve osmo regulation when we are in the situation uh drink too little of water yeah too little of water or we uh, carry out vigorous activity and we lost a lot of water right okay so make sure you can understand yeah you can understand the osmoregulation that occur when we drink too much of water and also uh, what happened when we drink too little of water right make sure you can explain yeah, the mechanism of the homeostasis that occur to return the blood osmotic pressure back to the normal right okay please remember that yeah, osmoregul regulation occur when our blood osmotic pressure change yeah okay osmoregulation occur when our blood osmotic pressure change all right so our blood osmotic pressure change depend on the content of water in our blood yeah, depend on the content of the water in our blood all right so for example when the content of the water in the blood is too uh, little yeah, or too low it will cause our blood osmotic pressure increase yeah okay our blood osmotic pressure increase okay when uh, whereby yeah whereby when the water content yeah, in our blood is high or more all right so it will cause our blood osmotic pressure decrease all right okay please remember that one yeah the concept of the uh, osmo regulation and the relation to the blood osmotic pressure so the blood osmotic pressure relate to the content of water in our blood all right Okay, next we go to the last subtopic in the chapter 13, which is health issues yeah, related to the urinary system. Yeah, health issues that related to the urinary system. Okay, so uh, this is refer to the learning standard that is only one learning standard. Okay, which is describe health issues that are related to the urinary system okay so let's go to the uh, to the health issues yeah, that related to the urinary system okay this is referred to the two health issues yeah uh, that relate to the urinary system okay first okay uh, the issues yeah the health issues or the disease that related to the uh, related to the urinary system is kidney stones yeah kidney stones right so kidney stones okay so what happened here there is a stone yeah, in the kidney okay the stones in the kidney so uh, the kidney yeah, the kidney got stones here okay so how does the stones are form right so it is made up of uric acid yeah made up of uric acid calcium oxalate or crystalline calcium phosphate so all of these are referred to the toxic waste yeah that need to be excreted but cannot be excreted and it will accumulate yeah accumulate in the kidney and form as stones yeah form as stone right so what happened when there is a stone in the kidney it will block the ureter where yeah, will block the ureter 
okay, and reduce the production of the urine. Okay, and the patient will feel very pain, yeah, very pain during urination or uh, sometimes the urine are bloody. Yeah, the urine are bloody yeah, because the ureter are injured. Yeah, the ureter are injured here. Yeah. So once the stones flow into the ureter, it will cause the wall of the ureter injury and it will cause uh, blood. Yeah, bloody in the urine. Alright, okay, that is referred to the kidney, kidney stone. So, okay, how to avoid the kidney stone? So, we have to take the uh, equal, uh, uh, we have to take the right amount of water. Yeah? So, make sure you drink seven glasses of water in a in a day, alright? Yeah, it is the right amount of water. Yeah? Alright, okay, next we go to the a second heart disease that relate to the kidney of failure, right? Okay, so still relate to the kidney. Yeah, kidney is very important organ in excretion. So what happened when the, the kidney cannot function? It will cause kidney failure. Okay, kidney failure. So how does the kidney failure occur? It caused by illness. Sometimes we don't know what is the illness here. Yeah? Sometimes because of the uh, because of the disease, right? Okay, and then but the bacterial infections, yeah, bacterial infection, and also the accidents, all right? So, for example, the diabetes mellitus, okay? So, the diabetes mellitus can damage the glomerulus, all right? So, uh, that's uh, why we, uh, we sometimes yeah, heard the news that yeah, the patient that have diabetes mellitus also have kidney failure and this person need to do hemodialysis right okay because of the excessive glucose yeah excessive glucose yeah uh, that uh diffuse out yeah from the glomerulus into the bowman capsule is too much yeah it's too much and then it will uh, burden the glomerulus and what happened to the glomerulus glomerulus break Right, okay, break and cannot do the ultra filtration anymore. All right, so that uh, was what happened in the diabetes mellitus patient. Yeah, okay, so the health issues here is referred to the kidney failure. Okay, if the person have a kidney failure, so uh, they have to go to the hemodialysis. All right, okay, so I think that's all in the uh, chapter 13, I hope you can um, study more, uh, uh, read more and do your own notes, yeah? own mind map to understand more about the concept of the homeostasis, yeah? the concept of the formation of the urine and also relate with the heart disease, yeah? uh, heart issues that related to the urinary system. Okay, uh, that's all for now girls, okay, take care of yourself. Uh, right. Thank you.